have your Bible app, please open it. But I believe it's always better to have your own Bible, your book. Uh, Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3. Praise God. I thank the Lord for technology. I thank God for PNCC, for Wi-Fi, for Facebook. Because uh, all of us are here. Amen. And I thank God for that. Okay. Come on. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, though the grace given unto me, to everyone that is among me, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Let us pray this morning for hallelujah, the voice of God to be heard in this sanctuary. Let's all pray, my brothers and sisters. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for the church. And pray for the words to be. Hallelujah, God, we thank you for this place, for this time that you have given us. For the privilege and opportunity, I pray, O oh God, that you speak to us, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh God, that you will move in our midst. I pray, O oh Father God, that there will be miracle signs and wonders today. Because it is your perfect will. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And we give you the hands to the Lord. Before you may be seated, shake the hands of your neighbors and say, I'm so glad that you're here. You're looking mighty good. You look so good this morning. Praise God. Everybody may be seated. You look so good. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I really thank God for... Uh, uh, for brothers who were cleaning the van because we would have not known that we have a whole day power outage in IRI. That's why we are here today because there is no power in IRI from 9 to 4 p.m. And we just found out around 4 p.m. yesterday. Amen. Amen. So I think it's not something that's... I mean, every Sunday is a special day, but it's not something so special that we have to be here. But it's just like, I know everybody would be sweating. And I know we can do that. We've done that with no power. We can still praise and worship the Lord. No problem. That's not the issue. But, you know, the Lord wants us to be comfortable. Amen. Praise Amen. God. And I thank God for the care group leaders, for the leaders who have uh, followed up, texted, called. Make sure that everybody knows that the service is today. So can we just give God all the glory and praise? Amen. So is this place okay for you? It's okay. Praise God. But I have some requests that after the service, bring your own chair <laughs> downstairs. Let's help each other. And we'd like to give glory to um, VIP Hotel uh, for having us here in a very short uh, notice. Amen. Praise God, hallelujah, or else we don't know uh, where we will be uh, this morning. But I think, I believe that this is the will of God for us to be here. Amen. Amen. I know it's supposed to be a Tagalog service, but today we will have only one service, no afternoon service. So let's just try to do mix mix or 90%, 10%. That's okay, no problem. No problem, kids? No problem? Kids, no problem? No? <laughs> You feel good? Sleepy? Cold? Huh? Cold? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One more time, let's give Him praise. I've been thinking about uh, today and I've been really praying. I thank God for another year. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that it's not because it's my birthday we're here. 
Amen. Praise God. You might think, oh, it's the birthday of Pastor, and you know, no, it's not that. Uh, um, we are here because of uh, PPUC. I thank God for PPUC. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I really thank God for that. And so, thank God for the brothers and sisters who have helped us carry all this equipment. Amen. Praise God. Somebody has to do it. God will bless them mightily. Amen. Praise God. I've been thinking of 42 years of my life and I've been thinking about this day. What am I going to share? And I think I'm not going to share about 42 years of my life. That's too, too long. But I've been thinking about the success of the people in this world. Amen. Do you want to be successful? Amen. Do you want to be successful in life? In our work with our family, everybody wants to be successful. But the more you read the books, the more you read books about finances, about leadership, about empowerment, about getting to be a better person, you have to read. Amen. And I know as a country, as a nation, as a Filipino, um, I have noticed, if, sorry if I'm... If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but we are not so used to reading books. Unlike America, uh, most of the first world countries, it has been in their society that it is imperative or very important to read, to educate yourself. They love reading. Amen. Us, we like watching. <laughs> Amen. We are stimulated by movies. But many people, you know, outside of the Philippines, uh, especially in the first world countries, their, their mindset is being changed, even their belief because of the book that they read. Right. Right. And so, if I have a message this morning, is changing the mindset. Yeah. It is very important to be successful in the spiritual world is to change our mindset. Amen. That's why the, the book of uh, Romans 12, 2, if you can see it, it says, Be not conformed, 12, 2, to this world. You know, the world is also forming us. But the Bible says, do not be like the world. Amen. 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 So there must be a shift. Of our thinking, a shift of our desire, a shift of our priorities. Amen. That there's a mindset that we think we are winning, but actually we are losing. I thank God because I thank God that uh, I can now uh, watch you wait. Praise God. But that is Is it uh, is it okay at the back? Can you hear me, or am I too loud? It's okay? Good? Okay. okay, thank you. Praise God. Okay. So by the way, we think that we are winning, but actually we're losing. Amen. Amen. Because the ultimate victory is having eternal life. But my feedback read. my feedback. The ultimate victory is to have eternal life. Amen. That's it. That's the ultimate victory. Amen. Praise God if you have a mansion. Praise God if you have three or four cars. But that is not real victory. Amen. Maybe that is comfort. Maybe that is success in this world. But the Bible says be not conformed. Amen. Don't think like the world thinks. Right. Amen. 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 We have to change our mindset. Amen. Filipinos, I'm talking to each one of us because I'm a Filipino. It is not our duty and our responsibility that when we go back home for a vacation, that we have to bring gifts to every relative neighbor. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That is a mindset. That is actually an imprisonment. So we have to think about it like we have to change our mindset. Amen. And the one that dictates the mindset is only two. And these two entities only give suggestion. The ultimate decision maker is us. Right. 
Amen. Amen. The number one suggests the one that who suggests is God. Amen. Amen. He suggests what we need to do, what we ought to do, what we should be doing. And the second one is of course the enemy, the devil or Satan. Second Corinthians eleven three. Are you ready to change your mindset this morning? Are you ready to look at the cross and say, I God, thank you, Lord, for that cross. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Thank you, Lord, for washing me, oh Lord, for forgiving me. I'll get to the good part. Okay, you have to remind me. I don't have time. I know what time I will be finished. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent, beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupt, corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Amen. 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 So serving the Lord is very simple. I believe a second grader, a third grader, or even a first grader can understand the simplicity of Jesus Christ. And that's kind of, for those who are very intelligent, for the intellectuals, they don't like simple, they like complicated. Amen. Like some of us, our Facebook status is complicated. Amen. <laughs> Baka yung kumatawa yung complicated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you want simple or complicated? Simple. You want one plus one or two the square root of twelve? <laughs> but the Bible is very simple. And he says here that the serpent should beguile. Beguile means perception, deceive, seduce. Perception is the purpose, intellect, disposition, device, mind, or thought. The, the purpose of the devil is to give suggestion to our minds. To corrupt us, to defile us. Amen. To confuse us in the simplicity in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's harder to believe that there is no God than to believe there is a God. There is God. Not a God, but God. Amen. It's harder to imagine. It is so complex, complicated. Amen. Even Stephen Hawking could not even fathom the universe. He was limited to his own thinking. One of the most intelligent minds that the world has seen. Stephen Hawking, if you don't know him, it's okay. You have not lost anything. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, you will lose everything. Amen. I thank God that I know Jesus Christ. I thank God that I was born in a country that preaches Jesus Christ. I thank God my parents brought me to church, amen, knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, that He died for you and me. Can we just thank Him for that? Hallelujah today. In order for us to become not one of the statistics of a box-leaden Christian, we must change our mindset. Because Paul was writing to the church, he is saying that the devil is after your mind. Tell your neighbor, the devil is after your mind. <laughs> are, you, are you in your right mind? Or are you losing your mind? Amen. Amen. You've heard that expression, right? Amen. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> right? Have you, have you heard that? Amen. From your boss? But maybe with curse? <laughs> in, in between, in the middle, and from beginning and end? Why are you doing that? Have you lost your mind? Because mind... The mind will always dictate what the heart would feel. That's why when you always think about your ex, you get... Ah, 
may pa ba kayong mga ex? Hindi pa ba kayong mga ex-ex? Tanda-tanda niyo naman, may ex-ex. Satan is a great, is a great at suggestion. But I thank God, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, is great at salvation. Somebody made this statement, it's not mine. But this pastor said, we cannot go to hell by mistake, nor we can make it to heaven by accident. No, God does not force us to be in heaven. Because maybe we want to go to hell. Who wants to go to hell? See, even the first graders understand. No. That's why we're here at the aircon because we want to go to heaven. It feels like heaven is like this cold. Yeah? You want to be cold? Yes. Amen. Everybody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to be. Who knows how to... No, never mind. I know everybody knows how to fight. You know? To fight, you know? Maybe like this, like this, like this. What else? But in boxing. Amen. It is very important not to get hit. But before you go to a fight, I think everybody knows Manny Pacquiao. Who doesn't know Manny Pacquiao? Hey, raise your hand. Okay, everybody knows Manny Pacquiao. Amen. Amen. He always says that when he prepares for a fight, he prepares his, what? His mind. He has to prepare his mind that he has to go through a grueling training for six to eight weeks. He has to prepare himself. To fight a man on the boxing ring. It's also 25 million per fight, so dollars. Praise God. But he has to prepare for a fight. Because if he is not ready, when he gets hit, for sure he will fall down. Do you want to be called a coward? No. Okay, let me just say that in Tagalog. Gusto ba kayong tawagin duwag? Pero nakakaintin dito. Ayun din yan, yung duwag. What is coward in Palau? Madak. Do you want to be called such as a coward? Madaktal. Yes. Yes. Do you want to be called a coward? No. But in the spiritual world, I'm not saying us, but there are many people who are cowards. That they refuse to fight anymore. Because when you are a fighter, you remember when Oscar de la Hoya did not stand up? He refused to stand up to fight Pacquiao. He was called a coward. He could have gone down, knocked out, or going down, but he was preserving himself. He was actually called a coward. Because if you are a fighter, you must go down fighting. Amen. You remember Paul when he said, I fought a good fight and I have finished my race? Do you think it was not because of a mindset that there is a fight going on? But in life, there is a fight. Sometimes life hit us with sickness. Sometimes life hit us with financial problems. And we go down. But it is up for us to stand up in the spirit as if we are fight again. Come on, fight! It's not easy to stand up and fight. It's easy just to give up. Financial problem. Amen. And the Bible says, but I will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And you stand up in your spirit and say, I am a God that loves me. I know that he loves me. He knows the way that I take. We must fight. It's very easy to give up. That's the easiest. That's why people commit suicide. 
Because they wanna do they, they wanna face the problems that their choices that they have made in the past. Right. And it's easier just to shoot. Ham. Jump. 101 ways to die. Don't get comfortable. God is saying you have to change your mindset. Don't you know that I've died for you? Don't you know that I came here for you? Don't you know that I love you? Don't you know that when you sleep at night I'm beside you? Don't you know that I am comforting you? But the problem is there is a devil that suggests that we don't need God. That we don't need time for God. Say, just work, 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 work. God will understand. That's the suggestion of the devil. Amen. Twenty dollars can, you know, can last long. God will understand every Sunday. I you said twenty or twenty-five now. La alam na tayo. Okay, twenty-five. Maybe I hope and pray. I'm praying to God, Lord, give us financial blessing. That for those who will have a part time, just have a part time in church, we'll pay you twenty-five dollars to come to church. Really, I'm not kidding. If we're really serious about saving souls, we have to fight that. Amen. Praise God. But there is a principle to financial blessing. I'm not going to preach about that. But what I'm saying is, you will understand that if we change our mindset. Can we have that photo again, brother? I would like to go back to this photo again and again. I don't know why. You know what I mean? Can you even imagine standing before God trying to explain why other things were more important than Him? Can you imagine you stand there at the gates, the pearly gates of heaven, everybody lining up? Everybody here, you see people just go in, 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 in. And this line, very long time. <laughs> and God said, it's okay, I can wait for eternity. This is the side, the right side, where it says here, no explanation needed. Just go in. But on this line, you need to explain. <laughs> and you see your brothers and sisters who are like, oh, like, why am I here? Well, you have to need to explain every opportunity that God has given you. Amen. Why we have failed to praise Him. And thank him. But I thank God today. This is an opportunity for us to thank Him, to bless Him. Lord, why would you give Him praise today? Hallelujah. Yes. change our mindset. Before my mindset, before church should be so proper. Be quiet. But the more I read about the Word of God, the Lord is not quiet. <laughs> he, liked, he loves a make a joyful noise unto the Lord. If the world knows how to party, the church knows how to party. Yes! Can we not celebrate the goodness of God? Amen. Can we not celebrate that our brother was dead but God rose him from the dead? Is it not worthy of celebration? That God healed us of our cancer? Amen. For those who have been healed by cancer, shout amen. amen. Oh. Whew. You imagine that. We even shake the hands of our doctors. We even thank them when we even cry them. Thank you, doc. How about the greatest physician, the Lord Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Can we just give Him praise? Change our mindset this morning. Give Him praise. Eve has come fall short of the glory of God. Who's Eve, kids? The wife of Adam. Wife of Adam. Thank you very much. Eve is the wife of Adam. The devil suggested to her that the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil is good for her. You will become like God's. Where is that verse? Genesis. I think that's the three. Bible scholars, please help me. Fight a good fight. Change our mindset. Three five, please. 
But the three, four, five, let's let's go to the story. Let's go to, I'm sorry, brother. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch, touch it, lest you die. You know what's wrong with this statement? Anybody? God did not say, if you touch it, you'll die. Amen. Eve added something that God did not say. Kaya okay, gossip is very dangerous. Wala na nag Amen. And the serpent, knowing that the woman was not clearly listening, then the serpent suggested, you shall not surely die. Here's another suggestion. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. You know what happened when their eyes were opened? Actually, they become blinded. Huh? Because the devil is a liar. When he says your eyes will be opened, actually you're going to go blind. Even optic vision cannot help you. We have a great doctor there, but even doctors now, two doctors, but even them cannot help you. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, this is what it means. For the God of this world, you know, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the God, glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. There's only one solution to the problem with spiritual blindness, and that is hearing the words of God. Romans 10, 12, for faith cometh through hearing and hearing the words of God. That's why the devil will suggest that church is not important. Amen. Your work is. That is a knockdown, not a punch. And we believe that we are winning. But actually we are losing. We have to change our mindset. That's why I thank God for all of us that are here. We are fighting back. We're standing up. We're fighting for our families. We're praying. We're struggling. We're struggling. But God help us. There's a God that knows what I'm going through right now. Do you believe that today? That God knows everything? Let's give it glory. Let's give it praise. Hallelujah. We are overcomers. Because when Satan suggests something, it creates disunity between God and me. Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded... If we think like the world, act like the world, dress like the world, speak like the world, it is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's why you will know even if a person who comes to church is carnal or more worldly than spiritual. is because when you talk to them, you get discouraged instead of encouraged. Amen. 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 You know what? I've learned that when we lost our dog. Dogs. We lost our dogs three days ago. Ragnar and Rock. Ragnarok. We lost them. I don't know, maybe they said, you don't feed us that much. We might, might as well go to the jungle and maybe we'll find more food there. We've been looking for them in between Meseklat and Airai. I've been going every afternoon, every night, except last night, for the past three days. I got excited when I hear animal shelter. Amen. Amen. That they found three dogs. Oh, and when I went there, it was not them. And certainly I can feel what the Lord is feeling when He tries to look for us. Amen. But He could not find us. Amen. Can you imagine my heart like leaps when I see a dog on the road. So I'm hoping that it's there. 
Or every time I open the door, I'm hoping that he is there. And I said, no matter how bad smelling rat now wrong is, I said, I would really hug them and cook for them. I'm not kidding. I'm not even like, I'm not really even attached to them that much. But when we lost them, I felt something like, Lord, why, why am I feeling this? I've never felt anything like this to a dog. I don't really, I even kick them. You bad smelling dog. Every time we go out, but now they're gone, you kind of miss this man. <laughs> Why are you talking about your dog, Pastor? Well, I'm really affected by it. And can you imagine me losing a dog? I felt that way. Even my kids are crying right now. You know where that feeling comes from? That feeling of loss. You know how, how God feels when He's looking for us and He could not find us where we always sit? I think God, you sit differently today. <laughs> because in church, you always sit the same way. When I check attendance, oh, okay, okay. But now, I'm so confused. Like, where is God? Amen. You understand what I mean? Amen. Can you imagine how God feels when He comes in here, when He visits us and doesn't see us, and His heart is aching? But I thank God, God is happy to see us today. He finds time. Hallelujah. We react to His word. We feel His presence. What brings death or life is in our mind. And somebody would complain, I will disagree, Pastor. Pastor, I will educate you. It's not the mind that brings death and life. Pastor, you preached that two months ago. For one whole month, you just preached about the tongue. Proverbs 27, 1, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So why are you saying now, I'm so confused. Why is it the mind it is, brings death and life? Well, before you can speak, you think about it. Then you feel it. Then it comes out. Actually, that is one way of God's filtering system. Do you know what filtering system is? Brad, 27 one over. Tama or maliyabo? 1821 pala. 271 is what the boss not die suffer tomorrow. Death and life are in the power of that. So what you say tells me, tells us the condition of your heart and the condition of your mind. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why there was an author or writer who says, be careful of your thoughts because it will become your words. Be careful of your words because it will become your actions. Be careful of your actions because it will become your habit. Be careful of your habit because it will become your character. Be careful of your character because it will become your destiny. But it started with a thought. Amen. That's why I changed the mindset. Amen. I learned people, and I thank God for those who are really, really positive and say, Don't worry, sister, don't worry, pastor, these dogs will return soon, very, very soon. And I thank God for that. There's hope. Amen. But what God is allowing me to feel is this. You even feel that for a dog. How much more if I lose you? Amen. You know how I am feeling. I have sacrificed for you. Amen. Amen. I've been looking for you, searching for you, and the devil is saying you cannot go back. But what I'm telling you right now, you can always go back. Amen. The door is always open. Mercy is overflowing. Salvation. The door has never been closed. Amen. The 
the devil is saying, you have no chance. Look at your past. Oh my goodness. Maybe if you go to church, you will burn. That's what I heard from the devil. You go to church. Hey, I mean, English, huh? Maybe you, because you cannot stand in the presence of God that you will be consumed. But God is a consuming fire that does not destroy, but purify. That's why sometimes it hurts. Oh, that pastor really is talking about me, but I thank God because that is the purifying John 13, 2. I want to talk about two people. Am I still good with time? Amen. I know nobody watches watch, but... And the supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas is started. Simon's son of the traitor. Tell your neighbor, please don't be a Judas. Para mo lang effect, no? Tagalogin mo daw. Paano yan? Hindi, kailangan meron. Please. Pakiusap. Huwag kang maging kutas. Lalo na kung magpisaya magsabi, masaktan ka talaga. Kaya nga may please. Please don't be a chutas. Acts 5.3 but Peter said, and Ananias has, why has Satan filled the heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and took the bad part of the price of the land? We're talking about Judas and Ananias. These people were not bad people. Judas was not bad. Okay. It's okay. Work not a word. Uh, Judas and Ananias were not bad people. You have to imagine Judas was a man filled with faith. Amen. If you look at the story in the gospel, Judas was one of the disciples that were wherever they go, they perform miracle signs and wonders. <clears throat> this is a man that had felt the power and the glory of God. Amen. Yes? Amen. Amen. Do you agree with that? Amen. Judas was had seen the effect when we accept Christ in our life. He has seen it. He has lived it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But something happened along the way despite the fact that he was experiencing the power. When he lays hands on the sick, they recover. Amen. When they rebuke the devil, they, re they go out. Wow, they say, wow, Judas is here. And the, and the devil saw something maybe in Judas. Maybe the, the, the demons and the devils probably were having a meeting. And they're trying to take out the 12 disciples. Why? Because they became so powerful. Look at the word of God, the gospel, wherever they go, two by two. That's all we need to have a miracle. I only need one to agree with me this morning. And we can have a miracle. Hallelujah. We can be having a miracle right now. Yes. So we have to understand that the Judas was not a bad guy. That Judas was blessed beyond measure, but something happened. He accepted the suggestion of the devil. Amen. Somewhere, somehow, when you know they had no homes, it was tough, and he was a treasurer or accountant. Treasurer, no, no. He was he was handling money, and probably he felt like they had don't have enough. Amen. And maybe, I don't know what happened with Judas, but Satan got a hold of his mind and got hold of his heart. 
That's why he did what he did. And don't trust every kiss. It's a kiss of love. Sometimes it's a kiss of betrayal. And Ananias also, I believe, if you look at the book of Acts, is a man of integrity, a man of honor, and it's the same, a man of commitment and sacrifice. The early church, because they don't have anything, they have agreed to themselves. They have agreed, okay? So it was... They agree, an agreement. Consensual? Is, am I right? The third? Is it right? Like when you agree something? Or it's wrong? I don't know. Like they have agreed to sell all their lands and give it to church. Mutual agreement. Okay. So meaning they were not forced. Get it? It is not beneath it. They were not forced to give all their lands and their money. But somewhere, somehow, Satan tricked them in believing, just get a little bit. Nobody will know. Right? Just get a portion. You know, like, you deserve that. Maybe Ananias forget that it was a mutual agreement between him and God. What the Bible says, what happened to Ananias and Sapphira, they died instantly. Can we go there? Uh, maybe four. Peter said, Ananias was hath Satan filled while it remained. Was it not thy own? Yes. It was your own. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Yeah. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied to men, but to God. You have agreed. Not to me. Peter said, right? You did not lie to me, Ananias. You lied to God. Amen. And Ananias, how did he know? There's no CCTV yet. Amen. God invented CCTV before CCTV. Amen. He knows. Amen. And four and five, and what happened? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear in all of them that heard these things. Don't wait for things to happen for us to wake up and get scared. Amen. Don't ever think that we have not been judged by God, that judgment is not coming. I know mercy is flowing this morning. Amen. I know His grace and help is flowing. But it needs a repentant heart. Really do. It really needs an examination of one's self. Psalms 139, 23. It says, Search me, O oh God, and know my heart, and try me, and know my thoughts. The problem with people is this search their hearts, O oh God. Yes, right. Amen. Know their motives because my motives are pure. Oh, leg. But no, if you are spiritual, you cannot say that. Maybe I'm the one at fault here. Why this relationship at work, at church, with my in laws? For those of in laws, say amen. amen. Are not working. Maybe it's me, maybe it's not them. Amen. Search me, oh God. That is a change of mindset. Right? Amen. It's not my co-worker's fault. Maybe it's my fault. Amen. Before I start pointing, maybe I should point like right. that. Next time, if you point. <laughs> Very smart, yeah? And everybody say, praise God. Praise God. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Know my thoughts. Do you allow... Do you know what a cryptomaniac is? Do you know? 
a person has no control but takes stuff without him noticing it. You know, it, it, it is a it is a sickness. Maybe it, it's a sickness in the mind. You know, it's not his fault. It's not her fault. Um, do you have a friend that you know is a thief? Wow, you have good companies. I have a lot of friends who are thieves. Do you allow them to come into your house without anyone watching? <laughs> huh? No. Or maybe if you're suspecting your house of getting your money, would you allow all your money to just be laying out there? No, right? You put it in a safe place. But how funny it is that how we lock our doors, how we lock our cars when we go up. But we cannot look our mind. We should have a look with our mind. Because when we meet people, sometimes they throw thra trash and junk in our minds. You have a very good day. Hallelujah, the sun is out. And you meet somebody said, it's too hot. <laughs> I don't like it. And all those negative feelings, all those junk, sometimes can fill up our minds. Do you have a friend like that every time you see all negative? Maybe they are attracted to you because you are passive. Or maybe you are the same birds. <laughs> birds of the same feather are the same birds. Birds of the same feather flock together. That's why I don't go with people who are very negative. Because they see differently what I see. That's why I thank God when we hear the doctor says, it is terminal. I thank God Jesus Christ says, oh no, I can fix that. Yeah. Just have a little bit of faith. Just have a little bit of faith and I can fix that. Yeah. Woo. How many miracles do God need, do we need, for us to believe in God? We cannot even count how many miracles that God has, we have seen it before our very eyes that God has done in our ministry. Amen. Pastor, it's very important to understand that this junk fills our minds, fills our hearts, that it causes death. Amen. Amen. Where do you throw your trash? In the, in the bin or in the dump site? You don't put it Eternally in your house. Why? Because it will smell death, decomposing uh, everything. But it is like that also in our minds. Everybody say praise the Lord. Evil thoughts, negative thoughts come from what we allow in our minds. That is John 10:10 10, 10 there. The trash and junk that we allow in our minds, about our family, about who, everything. The thief cometh not but to steal. And this is the beginning of the trick of the devil is to suggest. And what happens is he steals the joy. We just came from church. It happened to me many times. We just had revival the moment we got in the car. There was a problem. All the joy that I have experienced in church in a second, gone. And I said to myself, why would I allow a certain circumstance to steal the joy that I had with the Lord Jesus Christ in the presence with His angels, with the presence of brothers and sisters who are fighting, who are crying before the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. I'd rather go back to that feeling than being, being depressed. I'd rather go back to the feeling of being encouraged and being nourished by the Word and the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Don't allow traps to come in. That's why many of us, and I know, and I'm very, you know, I have to be careful with my hypertension because I get, you know, my wife knows this. I get ticked, and she's joking me right now. She says, maybe you are experiencing andropos. I said, so then I have to behave. I have to think properly. Amen. Because sometimes I react instantly. And I said, my Lord, help me to filter this. I cannot be feeling all the time like this. And I thank God that when we read our scriptures, when we fill our minds with the Word of God, actually He is washing us with His Spirit, with His life. Hallelujah. That's why it's very important to pray in the morning. Yes. Did you brush your teeth this morning? Yes. Did you took a shower this morning? Yes. Did you read your Word this morning? Yes. That is also washing. Yes. By the renewing of your mind. The dirt from yesterday will not affect us today because the Word of God has washed us, has given us a direction, has given us a purpose, has given us meaning to this life. Yesterday, I was thinking about committing suicide, but today, I thank God, God has given me there's more to life than the problems that you are facing. Pastor, you never know what it's like to be thinking suicide. Oh no, I know. I thought about that last year. Really? Yes. I understand why. So that I can preach about suicide. Can you imagine me being a pastor for eight years last year and still thought about suicide? I don't know why. I just, it just came to my mind. Praise God. You know how easy it is to kill ourselves, right? But it's so easy. Wrong thinking, wrong action. Amen. Right thinking, right action. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm hurrying up. Revelation 21, verse 8. I'm going to give two verses and maybe three more. Let me check. Then we're done. I preached this last Thursday. I have not finished it. I'll not finish it again. Revelation 21 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The fearful leads the list to be cast into hell because fear is the supreme enemy of faith. It produces unbelief. Do you believe what you believe here this morning? Amen. Amen. If you do really believe what you believe, the Bible says, go and preach the gospel. That's the purpose of the church, to grow and preach the gospel. How can I go and preach if I'm not a disciple? That's the mission of the church, for all of us to be disciples. Pastor, what is a disciple? Disciple is who is in growth in the Word of God, who is learning continually in the Word of God. That is a disciple. God willing, next month, we will have discipleship training. And that is open to everybody. Amen. Praise God. If you want to be a disciple, God has opened an opportunity. Because I don't want to stand up one day in heaven. He says, you didn't have, you might all complain in heaven. When you go to that explanation side, <laughs> you might blame me. I think all the pastors will not be in the no explanation side or explanation. I think all of us will be in the middle. Why waiting for those who will complain about us? Our pastor did not preach. Was my pastor? He said, "I was your pastor. I did not even see you." 
Oh ya. <laughs> I did not even see you carry a chair. I, I, I saw you sit. But I did not see you carry the chair going down later. He said, Pastor did not give us time to be a disciple. Well, next month we will have so that I will, I, I'm sorry, I'm just being selfish. I don't want to answer to God. You know, man, you had no time for discipleship. Amen. Amen. Are you excited for discipleship training? Are you excited Amen. to go deeper into the Word of God and what you believe? And the vision of the church, and this is my prayer, is for us to experience miracle signs and wonders. Do you love that? Amen. Praise Amen. God. And to be rapture ready. Rapture. rapture ready. If you have not, never heard of rapture, it's good to be a disciple first. We will discuss that. Rapture ready. It's that when the Lord comes, when He went at the twinkling of an eye, we we'll just go with Him. And that is something that we need to study about that I cannot preach during Sundays. And we need more time on that. Are you excited for that? All the disciples, one of the disciples of the living God. The fearful to commit, fearful to sacrifice of all the drunkards that are not even there. Amen. The murderers are even, how many on the list? On the fourth one. But the fearful and unbelieving first one. Wow. The word of the Lord says that fear not. We just had a youth conference entitled Fear Not. Amen. Don't be a coward in life. Amen. If you're struggling with something, it's time to stand up in the spirit of God. Amen. It's time to fight back in the name of Jesus. Do you know how we fight? There's a movie with that. Amen. We fight. I can remember there were so many things happening in my life that I cannot pray standing. Have you ever felt like that? That you're going through a lot in your mind, in your heart, in your body. The enemy has attacked me and I, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I thought I was going to go crazy. Amen. Praise God. And when you go crazy, everyone around you will also go crazy too. Amen. 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 I know you're not crazy, but you know somebody that is crazy that's driving you crazy. They have, we affect people with what we are feeling. When you feel down, even if you're very joyful, you also feel down. Praise God. I went through that, and I, I felt through the darkness and valleys, amen, praise God, of that valley. And I just, I just saw this bumper sticker in Palau. I saw it, and I know the driver. And I saw it, and it just gave me encouragement. Just through a, a sticker, it says, Sometimes our problems, I oh know, God allows problems to drive us down in our knees. There are things that we can fight on our knees. We can start praying for our family, we can start praying for our kids. That is not being a coward, that is fighting. If you don't want to be a winner, you fight for your family. Pray on your knees. Claim in the name of Jesus. Woo! We are fighting the wrong way. That's what that movie said, War Room. I could never forget that. If you have not seen that, watch that. It's about prayer. War Room. We've been fighting our battles wrong. There are our bosses that we cannot control, circumstances we cannot control. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But there is someone that who is in control, and his name is Jesus. If you believe that, shout his name. Jesus. <laughs> 15, I say a last verse. I'm, I'm going to end. I'm ending. I'm, I'm going to end. I'm, not, I'm sorry I did not finish it, but maybe next time. Amen. Praise God. Okay, one more verse and we're going. 
Isaiah 54, 14, In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. I thank God here in Palau there are no terrorists. Amen. 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 Are you not thankful with that? Can you just give Amen. praise God? Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God that there are no checkpoints here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, th I thank God that they, even our shopping centers don't have security guards with high with AR. You know what's AR? Automatic rifle. In the Philippines, you cannot do that. Especially in Dawi Mindanao. In righteousness shalt thou be established. In righteousness shalt thou be established. What is established? Establishes firm. Strong. Amen. That's why we go to an established bank. Amen. We go to an establishment that is established, that has a good reputation, that has been there long, because they have been established. Because we know what to expect in an establishment that is established. Shall we make it an establishment? But the Bible says if you want to be established and if you want to be victorious and if you want to be an overcomer, the first things first is John 6.33. And I will connect that with that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. No, Matthew 6.33, I'm sorry. If you want to be established, seek ye first. I thank God there's a music fest here. But I thank God you seek the Lord first here. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's not only it. And His righteousness. And everything shall be added. All the things that the world is searching and longing for, that is crawling for and running after for. God says, there is a secret to that. Right. It's very simple. Simplicity of Christ. Amen. It's so simple that sometimes we cannot believe. That's the only key. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And everything shall be added. And in 54, this is what I love. I should have a poster on this one. Because I always fear of something. Amen. Do you fear something? Amen. Is there a fear in you? Praise God. I thank God you're very strong, but me, I'm very fearful. Amen. I fear a lot of things. That's why I need this verse for myself. Do you need it for yourself? Amen. Because in times of oppression, in times of fear, in times of terror, and I can come here in righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear from terror, for it shall not come near you. Why? Because we have the Lord who is our protector. We have our Lord who is our redeemer. We have our Lord who is our savior. And that's why we don't need to fear. Amen. I thank God that we are courageous now. That when we face our battles later, <laughs> Always made this joke when pastor said, You think you have revival now? You think you're so strong now? Don't you know that the devil's in your barracks is also working out? Where's <laughs> that sister? Oh, oh, shouting and dancing over there. The devils are also working out. The moment you arrive there, here we go! <laughs> the fight will happen later. Amen. Amen. But for sure it will it will happen. But I thank God we have enough nutrients and enough word and spirit and we have all the weapons. Woo! In the name of Jesus, devil, don't come and say my mind. Praise God. Do you have any problems this morning? Amen. Amen. You know, God can help us with that. That's why it's very important to receive His Spirit. Let's all stand. Yeah.
just stand for a few moments, close your eyes, don't talk. You, you can close, just bow down your heads. Okay?